All right, so I have decided to repurpose uh, an old snow machine trailer for the new fly fishing raft. So here it is. Just picked up a bunch of material at Home Depot. Doing uh, two four by eight sheets of sandy ply and uh, got a bunch of other stuff inside. So we're actually gonna be cutting this angle, grinding this, you can see I've already made a little grind mark right there. I'm gonna be cutting this angle off all the way back on both trays here that were exposed. They had some old timber treated runners in them um, and then doing a few other upgrades along the way. So stay tuned. And All right, as you can see right there on the starboard side of the raft, the old timber runners of the traction bars, uh, I ended up pulling those off, did the right side first and then the left following it. They had uh, exceeded their lifespan. Uh, that was like a half inch of uh, plywood, uh, probably a sandy ply or some sort of marine plywood. I ended up going with a three quarter inch sandy ply and four by eight sheets. Um, I'm really happy with it. I feel like it's gonna last really well. Uh, for many years, especially where, you know, I don't do a ton of long distance trips uh, or plan to with this raft, but also the, the idea of it was to, you know, not have it be abrasive to the bottom of the boat, but then also make this trailer more versatile for other uses as well. So have it be multi-purpose, whether it be just for the raft or even just moving stuff around or hauling shit to the dump. So a view of it. What I'm doing, so there was runners previously, uh, two foot by eight foot that ran in between there. I'm gonna cut off this tray on both sides. So one, two, three, four, leave the rear ones to catch it. It's three quarter inch sandy ply. That's my loud dog. And uh, gonna redeck the entire thing in two, four by eight, three quarter inch sheets of sandy ply. Plan is to get some sort of basket here or uh, weight nest um, gonna do some upgrading I'd like to put a winch post a post right there with a ratchet winch to pull everything on then I'm gonna also add a roller bar here to the rear so got a idea for it we'll see how it goes so for the bottom where those runners are gonna be exposed I actually picked up some of this uh, poly utility panel it's like eighth of an inch um, I'm actually gonna cut that into two foot strips in eight foot length and actually put it on the bottom or may mount it to the trailer and then uh, put a sealant around it just to keep any moisture that may be bouncing up coming up from the bottom um, even though I'm gonna seal all this stuff here's what I'm sealing it with I'm using this uh, Bear Premium Solid Color in a cedar, natural tone, this waterproofing stand sealer. Then uh, I'm gonna pilot drill um, all the uh, plywood. Uh, just drill these little pilot holes so it doesn't split nothing and use these inch and seven sixteenth inch self-drilling screws uh, with these, uh, they've got self-tappers on the end of them. And then uh, to cut off those edges, I don't have a torch or anything like that. So I'm just gonna use this little grinder um, use these cutting wheels right here. These Diablo cutting wheels. These ones rather. And uh, cut through there and then use the grinder. Just bevel out all the edges. Anything that may catch you. Here's my raft. Uh, this is a 12 foot river rat. Um, company based out of here in Utah. And uh, it's actually so two foot overhang on both ends of the trailer. Because that trailer is an 8 by 8 It's an old snow machine trailer. But, I mean, it pulls really well. This thing's only 150 pounds um, as it is with the frame uh, fully inflated. And it's got a self bailing floor as well. Um, this thing's awesome. So super versatile. Uh, drafts in as little as three inches of water. So super easy to get on and off. And the old deck was covered in, uh, you could see it out there. It's a uh, type of, uh, it's like a spray on, bed liner 
and I just worried about it tearing up the bottom of this raft um, over time. So that's one reason I'm, I've decided to go with an all wood deck. put down the uh, two four by eight sheets of sandy ply uh, started working with that uh, the only thing I didn't account for was the two inches of overhang on the back so it is an eight by eight deck but there were two inches of overhang I didn't account for so rather than trim the one deck or both of them down uh, one inch I just did the one two inches and you can see it right there on the middle piece just above the middle tail lights uh, how one does overhang a little bit. All right, so the deck is on. The plan was to keep these uh, stays here at the back. I ended up having to cut them off. Uh, the three quarter inch didn't quite fit underneath the way I wanted to. So just marking everything up for uh, pilot holes. And then uh, gonna run these inch and seven eighths or inch and quarter. Tappers. So I'll pilot drill. Um, screw in over, uh, mark it over um, inch and a quarter from the edges, and then kind of go up. So I'm gonna follow the frame along the sides and the front, and then made these marks over here where the trays are underneath. Yeah, plastic. again enlisted uh, Jovi and Ruby's help uh, setting these out so you can see I've already gone through pre-drilled them and then I'm just going through and just tapping these in just to have them set and ready to uh, be able to drill um, maybe not everybody's preference but this is what worked for me One, one 
off. So these are inch and seven sixteenths, number 10 diameter, 300 of them. So I guess I put 299 in. So the reason I set them like this, uh, just to be able to easier prep with, you know, these are, these are self tappers. So you can see the uh, drill bit head on them and then the countersink. So should pull into the deck nice and clean without having to do countersink holes. Um, the reason I set them up like this is just that way when I hop on the impact, I can just plow through them and just have them set and I'll be setting every single one ready to go. It's nice to have two little kids that are willing to help even though it's like uh, herding cats sometimes. So had to take a little bit of a break this afternoon, but it's time for the impact. Uh, got everything all cleaned up. Got it back in the garage. It's cold here in Utah. So, start zipping these in. Enjoy. gone a little too deep on a few but I'm gonna put some sort of epoxy over the deck probably even though it's already sealed but do a time lapse of the whole thing and then uh, can eventually add the rollers a witch post uh, wow winch post up here on the tongue and then actually to come is so that's a three by three and a half inch uh, it's like quarter inch, it's not even quarter inch. It's like eighth inch still that's overlapped. You can actually see underneath. Um, it's just these tacks. So, I mean, this is an old trailer. So I've actually, oh, there's my dog's face. I've had these uh, 18 volt, uh, the Ryobi, 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 whatever, the, however, the, however you pronounce them, Ryobi, the plus one, 18 volt plus one system. I've got the whole setup over there. I'm just giving this guy a break for a few minutes. Um, these are uh, four amp hour batteries. Uh, they have the, I think the smaller ones that they like come standard with are two amp hour batteries. But I've had this system for almost three years. Um, I love it. I also have their 40 volt uh, mower. I have a huge yard, but I love the mower. It's compact, packs up. Same with uh, the weed eater, and it's a weed eater trimmer and the blower. It's an awesome combo. I actually really enjoy your LB's tools. Um, just picked up a four and a half inch angle grinder. Uh, I've got this awesome impact that I just changed. That guy right there, I just changed uh, uh, oh, I tossed them already. So I changed uh, the upper ball joints on my 2016 Toyota 4Runner. Um, and it was really, uh, really good. I really enjoyed it. So I really enjoy Ryobi's line of tools, their power tools. The 18 volt system's awesome. We've got the Brad Neller there. Uh, he used that for a shiplap project that my wife wanted to do inside. Um, the angle grinder is awesome. I think it's a seven amp or maybe five and a half amp, um, four and a half inch. And it's like 39 bucks at Home Depot. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the light I haven't really used to be honest because uh, it's an incandescent bulb. It's not even an LED bulb. I think their newer ones are LED bulbs, but like I said, this was like three years old, which it came with the uh, oscillating tool, the little circular saw, the little cutoff saw, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, skill saw, 
exhaust or whatever. The two drills, the impact and the standard drill, the Sawzall, Sawzall's awesome. Um, and I use that like on some drywall projects inside. So just taking a break from it and letting this one cool down. So. or earlier part of this, that these runners were open because there was like a timber insert. I put these plastic nails on the bottom, seal them. I still have a few other things to do before it's all buttoned up. But um, I just wanted it to be good and secure and I wanted it to look aesthetically pleasing as far as like the, the uh, pattern was concerned. So it ended up shaking out. I, I'm happy with it. it. It'll look good, so. deck job I was able to get it wrapped up over the weekend uh, get everything cleaned up get the boat back on it much easier much less worry about uh, abrasion or catching a knife edge or something and uh, worrying about bursting one of these chambers gonna save uh, the roller bar and um, the winch post for another video uh, down the line here so stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe thanks for coming by <laughs>